During the time when we planned this presentation, the epidemic uh, was just started. Uh, there are different interests, different understanding, but now we have accumulated a great deal of epidemiological and clinical experience worldwide and in our country. We can consider this problem completely differently. My presentation will be a bit different uh, that we are uh, planned in the very beginning. Now we are waiting for the presentation to be displaced. We will start from the point that uh, the coronavirus, a great group of pathogens, and they are, have been known for a long time. Uh, in the population of people, four uh, pathogens are circulating, and we see them in the seasonal respiratory infections. So they are well studied. They cause mostly uh, the diseases impairing the upper respiratory uh, airways, or pneumonia, uh, severe forms, uh, quite rare. Moreover, and we will see this on the slide, there are three main pathogens, uh, quite new, quite novel. They cause a specific forms of disease. It's a, a severe respiratory syndrome pathogen. It's called SARS. Now it's called the SARS of the first type. Uh, there are pathogens of the Middle East respiratory syndrome, MERS. And uh, the one that came to us at the end of the 2019, there is close to SARS. It's called the SARS of the second type. Now we have some technical difficulties uh, displaying presentation. Uh, and it makes it difficult for me to speak and for you to follow the presentation. It, it may happen quite frequently. And the first present is usually um, suffers from this. What can we say and what we will be talking about? The coronavirus is a group of uh, RNA-containing virus, and uh, SARS-CoV-2, it's uh, the virus containing RNA. Uh, RNA. It's uh, the type of the Bota virus family. 80% of this virus, uh, it's small picture. What we have already said, uh, what we have already said, this is the variant. Uh, how frequently we can see uh, this pathogen in the population, the incidence rate. It's uh, 2019, 2018 data for nearly 3,000 patients with these severe respiratory infections, those who were hospitalized as due to these respiratory infections. Please notice among uh, people uh, with the severe forms, 1.2% uh, patients were with the coronavirus infections. These four pathogens uh, that are circulating constantly. A brief information about uh, these uh, considerably new pathogens, zoonoses. So the first outbreak that happened in 2002-2003, the infection was registered in 9,000 persons. The death rate amounted to nearly 10%. Next story, it's a Middle East respiratory syndrome. Mostly the diseases were registered in uh, the uh, inhabitants and those who came from the Arabian island, uh, 2.5 thousand. But this disease is still being registered. Unlike SARS uh, that happened in 2003, and uh, there were no other incidences. Uh, out of 2.5 thousand who developed the disease, uh, the death rate were nearly 34 percent. 
December 2019. It's our story, and we discussed uh, uh, the time of emergence of the virus and the time frame of the registration of the first incidences of disease. More than 9.5 million of people were infected. Their mortality rate uh, amounts to 500,000. Uh, it amounts to 3.5%. It may different in different regions and in different age groups. Uh, the main source uh, is bats, but intermediary sources of infection or reservoir of infection, uh, there uh, were uh, cats, camels, but intermediary host of uh, their COVID infection is still under discussion. Uh, the risk uh, of a diseased person for others for a new uh, coronavirus comparing to uh, other types of coronaviruses, it amounts to from 2 to 6 percent, quite higher comparing to other pathogens. Uh, measles virus uh, has a high rate of contingency. Terminology that we are using now, uh, there are two terms and they are accepted in the same day. The first is the name of the pathogen SARS CoV 2. It was uh, the International Committee on Taxonomy of the Virus came up with this uh, term. And the second term, it's uh, the name of the very infection. Uh, it's a kind of a competition, WHO sometimes uh, call this virus COVID-19. But uh, more correctly, uh, we should say COVID-19. It's a disease about the pathogen SARS-CoV-2. It's RNA containing virus. It's uh, the but uh, cough group, it's a recombinant pathogen cell between the bats of coronavirus of bats and unknown origin of coronavirus. And it's very similar to the SARS of the first time. In our country, it's uh, according to Russian classification, it's uh, the second group of pathogenesis. Epidemiology, the virus can be detected uh, during one, two days before the manifestation of the symptoms. Uh, traditionally, we take smears from the upper respiratory rates, uh, airways uh, from the uh, pharynx and from the nasal uh, mucosa. 37 days, sir. Uh, uh, the virus can be shedded by the patient in a feces. In the majority of patients, uh, the virus uh, presence in the, is present in the body up to four or five weeks. Now, there are a great number of data uh, uh, that uh, virus may, um, uh, uh, may persist in aerosols on after different objects because of the conditions for the life of this pathogen may be quite favorable. In experiments, uh, uh, the duration and uh, strength of immunity uh, we have been witness uh, following up this disease up to six months. It's known that antibodies emerge classically uh, earlier. It's uh, M immunoglobulins. Uh, they emerge in several days from the beginning. Uh, M and G and A antibodies, uh, they appear nearly at the same time. Uh, they run parallelly. There is no uh, gap when we see a thirst immunoglobulin M, and in one or two weeks, another immunoglobulin, immunoglobulin G, appear. Uh, in this situation, all immunoglobulins, uh, they appear simultaneously. If we are talking about seasonal coronaviruses, the immunity to them is very is not sustainable. Uh, their repeated infection may happen during the year. Who are susceptible to this disease? Any age, and we can see this according to our clinical situations, patients of our country, the severe cause of the disease and the death happens in different age groups, uh, the probability of the death of mortality is more higher in the 65 group of age 
uh, those who live in the residential homes and in chronic uh, people suffering from chronic disease. Uh, their symptoms are quite classical. It's impairment of the cardiovascular system, impairment of the respiratory organs, and the metabolic disturbances. Pathogenesis, uh, there are entry points, epithelium of the upper respiratory airway, airway, airways and epithelial uh, sites of uh, their uh, stomach and of the bowels. Uh, the targets uh, are the uh, angiotensin converting ferment of the second time, ACE2. But the targets are the alveolis of the second types. Uh, moreover, it's known that there is a polymorphism of the gene responsible for this receptor. Of the 32 variants, now there are data that probably nine variants of polymorphism uh, can uh, make uh, person susceptible to COVID-19. The slide shows the life cycle of the pathogen. First of all, it's a connection uh, 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 with uh, ACE2 of a virus, uh, then transmembrane uh, protease of the second type. And when uh, the virus enters uh, the cell, uh, RNA is released, uh, transcriptions, replications are triggered, uh, virions, uh, viron, virions, uh, they came out of uh, the cells. Affinity of the protein SARS-CoV-2 tenfolds higher comparing to the affinity of the SARS uh, of the first type. It's a pathogenesis. First of all, it's infection, infection of the alveolar sites of the second type, suppression of the antiviral response. First of all, we are talking about interferon, non-control viral replication, damage of alveolar sites, and the triggering of the in inflammatory reaction. Uh, first of all, macrophages are released, and then biological active uh, uh, substances are released. First of all, cytokines and other biologically active substances that regulate or participate in inflammation. As a result, we can see a cytokine storm uh, when we are talking about uh, lungs, respiratory airways. So we are talking about acute respiratory distress syndrome. The second point. It's uh, impairment of a microsecuritary uh, compartment uh, with the impairment of your coagulation property and uh, coagulopathy. It's uh, the scheme that is presented by Mr. Vlasov. He is uh, the head of the chairs of pathophysiology. The main idea is that the main chains of pathogenesis, the impairment of the lungs, alveolar sites, uh, the development of the res acute respiratory distress syndrome, the impairment of alveolar sites, uh, the endothelium, the serrated cells, and then the dysfunction of uh, the vessels with the development of hypercoagulation and thrombosis. Uh, we can see uh, the comorbidities uh, that can uh, make, uh, they can deteriorate the disease resulted in the unfavorable outcomes. Today we are talking about different clinical variants of the cause of the diseases of the COVID-19. The most favorable one is acute respiratory viral infection with the impairment only of the upper respiratory airways, pneumonia without respiratory failure, res uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome with the development of pneumonia with acute uh, respiratory failure, then sepsis, sepsis shock, uh, thrombosis, thromboembolia. The most favorable cause of the disease is a symptom-free infection uh, when uh, we can say that a person uh, had the disease only due to the appearance of antibodies in his blood. And we have to study the situation later on here. There are the clinical manifestations, the most typical one, according to our Chinese colleagues who faced this uh, for the first time, first of all, is fever, impairment of the lungs as a dry cough, uh, fatigue, and all the symptoms that are typical of the uh, impairment of the upper respiratory vein. Incubation time 
may last up to 14 days. I am not going to talk about classifications and different types of the cause of the disease. Here we can see uh, the methodological recommendations from the Ministry of Health. Uh, uh, the um, mild cause of disease, severe and uh, moderate. 80% uh, 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 severe cause of a disease and uh, uh, quite rare. Uh, but uh, the outcomes may be very unfavorable. Uh, mortality rates, depending on the age, gender, comorbidities, uh, we received uh, the information from our colleagues. We can see that the main uh, uh, the higher mortality rates are uh, present in uh, the age gr old age group, older than 70 years of age. Men are more susceptible to the more severe course of the disease. And we can see the dependency on the comorbidities, metabolic states, and cardiovascular system diseases. Cohort of the Italian patients, uh, the date uh, of uh, those who died, 7,000 persons. So we can see how, due to age, mortality rates are changing. Up to 30% it was in the age group of older than 80 years, and men, they were more susceptible to the severe cause of the disease. I'm not going to talk about treatment. I'd like to say that. Uh, the quote from the quotation from the first version of the methodological recommendations when we were talking about the fact that uh, we are or, uh, we used the experience of the therapeutic regimens of the SARS of the first time when we use uh, one uh, or second component um, regimens of treatment. Now, uh, in the beginning of the second week, we will see the seventh version of the treatment regimen. Having known uh, the life cycle, uh, cycle of the virus uh, that is very close to SARS of the first time, we know the targets uh, where hydroxychloroquine or hydroxychloroquine with azithromycin may work where the combined medication uh, lopinavir, uh, retinavir can work, disrupting the pathological process of proteolysis and breakdown of the uh, viral protein, rendesivir uh, that can disrupt the replication and uh, Outside of the cells, it's immunomodulators and the um, cytokine storm blockers. Remdesivir, it's a medication with approved effectiveness. It's an analog of a adenosite nucleotide. It inhibits virus RNA-dependent uh, RNA polymerase. We can see uh, that uh, this medication, five days uh, of regimen intravenous administration, it can reduce uh, the time for um, uh, stoppage of the disease. Uh, uh, this medication will work in the Northern America. In our country, we don't have this medication. Then anti-COVID plasma pathogen reduced. It has viral neutralizing and uh, antibodies so they can neutralize uh, the virus. There are different scientific protocols, research protocols now. The data are being collected not only abroad, but in our country, in St. Petersburg as well, in different hospitals. We carry out uh, this uh, study. So we invite uh, reconvalescence and um, empirical experience uh, and uh, the feedback from our rheumatologists uh, are quite positive. A few slides as to oncological patients. Uh, there are two studies from the UK, 800 patients, oncological patients, and we can see uh, their mortality. We are talking about mortality. Mostly men, they prevailed. Oh, uh, the similar characteristics, uh, cardiovascular diseases, metabolic disturbances, patients mostly died 
in the critical conditions uh, related to COVID. The most important fact, and it was shown in the multi-center trial, clinical trial, 928 patients were analyzed, uh, average age 66 years of age. Uh, there are their characteristics mostly they were patients with a solid tumor some patients uh, they uh, were treated at that time at the time of uh, the study 121 patient died 1000 patients when uh, they were analyzed it was shown that the very oncological disease uh, the type of therapeutic oncological management uh, regimen didn't uh, influence uh, their outcome. Mostly the uh, pre-morbid background, uh, the comorbidities and the age uh, they got into play. What uh, what's it, what is it in front of us? What uh, we will have in the future? Our understanding uh, the second wave or uh, the increase in the incidence rate? in the near future. First of all, it uh, relates to the fact that uh, the circulation of the virus is still happening, and we can see the increase in the incidence rates in several countries, mostly Africa, the South America. Uh, the absence of the um, reliable population immunity. Now we don't have specific prophylactics, uh, prophylactics or uh, uh, effective antiviral medications. Uh, the pathogen has never circulated in uh, uh, the regions. Uh, the population is naive. In the population, there is a very low uh, amount of the uh, seropositive persons. Uh, now, due to uh, wash handing, uh, mask wearing, uh, it led to the fact that viruses will be continuing circulating. Uh, if we looked, uh, we can imagine that 70% of persons should be immune. But what we can see now uh, is that the data related to different countries, different cities. If we look at Russia, Moscow, it's 13%. In St. Petersburg, we have only 6% of immune persons. Our country is very large. We can see the different regions that are at different phases of uh, the exit point. Uh, the third phase in Sahalin, but in some areas we can see only the growth of the disease. Some restrictions are waived. Uh, the internal migration happens. Uh, undoubtedly, the pathogen will continue circulating, causing the disease. At the same time, in some amounts, we expect the seasonal drop. There are different dependencies in our country when we have a moderate climate uh, due to the temperature, uh, ultraviolet, ultraviolet uh, uh, Radiation people, they, uh, they are on holiday leaves. Uh, the borders are closed now, and uh, we can see that SARS CoV 2 are replaced with the intestinal viruses, rhinoviruses, and enteroviruses so that, co they, uh, that uh, cause uh, enteroviral infection. There are data from Iran. In the middle of April, uh, the um, awakening of the restrictions, and at the end of the June, we can see the growth of the disease with the increase in the mortality rate. And in Iran, the temperature, yes, as you can see, is more than 33 degrees. Uh, Iran is related to the region when uh, there is no drastic uh, seasonality. There are maybe some cultural specificities, religious types of communication of these people that can influence the incidence rate of the disease, namely the growth of the disease. We are talking about the fact that 
that its uh, uh, interdependence and influence and uh, interference is uh, Japan and France data. In the beginning, we can see the increase in the SARS incidence in Japan and then uh, against the background of the increase in the influenza cases, we can see the drop of the SARS. The similar situation is in France. But this carnival graph, uh, we can see uh, this uh, column diagram 2017-2020, red peaks, uh, that are the growth of the influenza rates cases, and at the same time, we can see the drop of the other incidence rates of the disease. In blue, it's a um, rhinovirus. Comparison of the dynamics of the disease uh, of influenza in this season and of the next season. Uh, we can see the peak in the first month of the year, and then the downward, tra downward trade, uh, trend. This season, uh, the drastic disruption, it may relate to the fact that influence infection is replaced and pushed out by the COVID infection. On the right, we can see the Australia diagram on the uh, up. Uh, we can see the southern hemisphere. Uh, it's um, the situation is a reverse. In our summer month, we can see the growth of the incidence rate of the disease last year increase, and at the bottom this year, the full replacement uh, of the influenza infection. Today we are modeling what we will uh, wait in the future. It's an experience of the pandemia of uh, that 2009 and 2020 of influenza. Influenza, the first wave, it came earlier, earlier than we expected. And next year, we can see the second wave. And we can see even the increase in the peak of uh, cases. Based on this experience, we may say that several seasons, epidemical seasons, not less than two, are to pass, like it happened in case of the influenza virus H1L1. This season, we expect that co-circulation of A and B influenza virus and typical uh, pathogens of respiratory infections that we see each year. It may lead to mixed infection and the very COVID uh, disease uh, may happen in the same way as we see this year. There are three scenarios. Uh, the entrance in circulation uh, SARS-CoV-2 Two, and then the replacement of these pathogens by the uh, influenza virus. The second type variant is uh, the return to the circulation of the new coronavirus, re uh, pushing out of other pathogens. And the third unfavorable scenario is an uh, incoming in the circulation pathogens of respiratory infection, and then they will be pushed by SARS and CoV-2. The difficulties, first of all, is a diagnosis, uh, the uh, preparation for the next season, vaccination against influenza virus, prevention of the influenza virus infection, vaccination uh, will uh, uh, will uh, reduce mortality rate and se severe outcomes. This year, we expect new pathogens uh, coming. Uh, we have to take care of the uh, older age group, uh, people with the comorbidity, medical workers, educational workers. Uh, uh, we have to reinforce our laboratory capabilities. We saw in the summer uh, the collapse situations as to the 
equipment availability, test system availability. In autumn, we will see the similar situation and we will have to diagnose not only COVID, but other types of pathogens. We have to increase our uh, hospital bed capacities, oxygen supply capacities. Uh, it has been shown this is a key point for treatment, not just uh, the availability of uh, uh, oxygen supply, non-invasive uh, ventilation, but uh, the uh, readiness of uh, the medical workers to uh, uh, provide this medical assistance. Uh, we have to increase our uh, at bed diagnosis, very rapid text for COVID, SARS, in uh, respiratory intestinal infections. Uh, uh, we have to, in, uh, for example, for influenza, we have our atheotropic therapy, and we can administer this therapy. In case of COVID, uh, new medications are emerging, rendosidir, for example. We have two diagnoses uh, etiologically and uh, so that to ensure right therapeutic arrangement. Thank you very much.